Do you own or are thinking of purchasing a Dynamax motorhome on a Freightliner chassis and want to learn more about how to operate one? This video will go step by step on how to fire up that Dynamax and get it safely down the road. Before we begin, keep in mind that some Freightliners are spec'd differently than others and a button or switch may be in a different location or may not pertain to your chassis at all. Please refer to your Freightliner owner's manual for any questions. First, let's go over the Instrument Control Unit, or ICU. The ICU provides the driver with engine and vehicle information, including the engine oil pressure gauge, light bar, driver message center, headlight high beam indicator, fuel def level gauge, primary air pressure gauge, mode reset button, secondary air pressure gauge, speedometer, tachometer, transmission temperature gauge, and coolant temperature gauge. There are two air gauges because the Freightliner chassis has a dual air brake system. The system share a single set of brake controls, but each has its own air tanks, hoses, and lines. The primary air system will operate the regular brakes on the rear axle, while the secondary air system operates the regular brakes on the front axle. First, complete your pre-trip inspections and maintenance procedures if necessary. Set your parking brake and make sure the transmission is in neutral. Make sure that the chassis disconnect switch is in the on position. It is very important to not crank the engine until the ICU completes its self-check. Also, please note that if the air gauges do not complete a sweep of their dials during the ignition sequence. If active faults are present during the sequence, please take the vehicle to an authorized Freightliner facility as soon as possible. Your nearest Freightliner facility can easily be found using the Freightliner Smart Source app on your smart device. Please consult our YouTube video on the Smart Source app. Make sure you observe the ignition sequence to ensure that the ICU is working properly. The following action should occur when the ignition is turned on. Number one, electronic gauges complete a full sweep of their dials. Number two, some warning and indicator lamps illuminate, then are extinguished. Number three, audible alert sounds until sufficient air pressure builds up in the primary and secondary air systems. Number four, def level indicator illuminates all segments green, then turns off one at a time before turning the leftmost segment amber, then red. Number five, software revision level of the ICU is displayed on the driver message center, followed by active faults. An audible alert sounds during the ignition sequence whenever one of the following conditions is present. Number one, engine oil pressure falls below the minimum preset value. Number two, system voltage is below 12 volts. Number three, the door is open with the headlights on and the parking brake off. Number four, the driver's seatbelt is not fastened with the parking brake off. Number five, the outside temperature is below 35 degrees Fahrenheit. If no alerts or faults are present, you may now crank the engine. Before releasing the parking brake and putting your Dynamax into drive, it is also important to know what all the switches on your dash are and what they do. Depending on the chassis and chassis year, some of these switches may be in different locations or not available. Once again, please consult your owner's manual for more information. Let's start to the panel of switches to the left of your steering wheel. The two switches to the top left are for cruise control. To turn cruise control on, press the upper half of the on-off rocker switch. To set the cruise control speed, flip the paddle switch down. To resume your cruise speed, flip the paddle switch up to the RES slash ACC position. To turn the cruise control off, press the lower half of the on-off rocker switch. If cold temperatures are present and you want the temperature of the engine to rise before departing, you can put the engine in high idle. To do this, while in idle, simply push the cruise control, RES slash ACC, up to increase the engine's RPMs by 1,000 RPMs. This is very handy during those winter months. Below the cruise control switches are switches to control the headlights and parking lights. When the paddle is lowered, the parking lights are illuminated. These lights include the front turn signals, 
the cab marker and identification lights, and the tail lights. When the paddle is raised, the low beam headlights illuminate along with all the parking lights. To turn off all the parking lights, return the panel to the center position. The switch below is the panel light increase-decrease switch. When the panel lights are on, they can either be brightened or dimmed by using the increase-decrease rocker switch. There are also two separate horns on your Freightliner chassis. The horn found in your steering wheel, also known as the city horn, and the pull-down air horn, located in the driver's side cab ceiling. Now, let's go over the switches to the right of the steering wheel. Some Freightliner motorhomes are equipped with a shutdown override switch. When the engine control module, or ECM, detects low oil pressure, or high coolant temperature, and it decides it is best to shut down the engine, the shutdown light and buzzer will come on indicating that an emergency engine shutdown is imminent. The shutdown override switch can be used to delay the emergency shutdown, giving you time to pull off the road and park safely, rather than being dead in the water in traffic. This is a seldom used switch, but very valuable if you find yourself in this bad situation. The next switch is the fog light switch. The low beam headlights must be turned on before the fog lights can be turned on. The fog lights will not illuminate if the high beam headlights are already on and switching from low beams to high beams will switch off the fog lights. If your motorhome is equipped with locking rear differential, that switch is also located in this section. The differential lock switch is a two position guarded rocker switch that should only be engaged when the vehicle is stopped or moving slowly at low throttle. This will prevent internal axle damage. This switch causes the wheels on each axle governed by the switch to rotate together. This switch should be used when extra traction is required, such as times when you are on dirt, gravel, mud, or snow. Next is the engine brake switch. This switch helps slow the motor home when the accelerator is released. The engine brake can also operate automatically when cruise control is on. If your engine brake has the high-low selector as shown, flip the switch up for higher braking, down for lower engine braking, or keep in the middle to turn the engine brake off. Next is the air dump switch. Push the switch to the down setting to dump the airbags, which makes it easier to level the coach. Only do this at the campsite. When you are ready to leave your parking space and when the levelers have been retracted, don't forget to return the switch to the up setting, which restores the air pressure to the normal operating height. A parked regen of the after treatment system may be needed and can be initiated with the request inhibit regen switch. It may also be used to inhibit the vehicle from performing an automatic regen. Depending on your driving, regens may be needed as often as once a day, especially if you do a lot of stop and go driving. There is also a chart located on the other side of the driver's visor that is a quick reference on when a regen is needed. Also on the dash, you will find an opt or option switch. Depending on your model and year of Dynamax, the option switch accomplishes different tasks. Some years and models will operate the mid side and rear docking lights if your motorhome is equipped with them. If your motorhome does not have the mid side and rear docking lights, and that switch is open as an option for you to use for a different aftermarket function of your choosing. Your dash may also contain a battery boost switch. This is a momentary switch that connects the house and chassis batteries in the event you drain one or the other and needs to start something. Now that we know what all of the switches and buttons on the dash are, next we can fire up your Dynamax Freightliner. Slightly turn your ignition key, but do not start the engine to the on position. Allow the gauge sweep that was previously mentioned to complete while the audible alert sounds for approximately four seconds. Once the gauge sweep has completed, turn the ignition key to the start position. With your foot on the brake, release the parking brake by pressing the yellow parking brake in and then select drive or reverse and now you're on the move. Thanks for watching and don't forget to follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos like this.